Good morning and welcome to another App Marketing Conversations. I'm here with Ryan Morrell of Game House and Ian Sefferman of Mobile Dev HQ and I'm Roby Mouli of Aptenic. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about non-traditional channels and, and marketing efforts uh, in, the, in the App Store and App Ecosystem more broadly. Um, and I think starting off with the why to talk about this stuff, we, we all know that paper install continues to increase in price. There's more competition every day and certain categories in particular are really expensive. We know that games is, is just hyper competitive, tons of competitors that are paying for installs, getting featured, etc. Um, so as you're approaching your marketing budget and your spend, what can you think about here? And in particular, I, I want to sort of talk a little bit about the retail space. We see more retailers coming online and trying to think about approaching this. Um, so it's expensive, it's crowded to look at paper installs. What are other channels that you would look at if you were Existing customer communication channels would be the first one. Yeah. Um, and so, you have an email list. You know, you have a website. Website. People come into your store and buy the chocolates. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, do that. So, you know, especially for retail um, or or anybody that has an existing communication channel, or existing customer relationship outside of an app, use that to drive people to your app experience. So, would you be a proponent of buying television advertising? Or I would actually. Uh, Have you ever seen any? Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about this offline. Uh, so, on certain occasions, I may watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians. On certain occasions, I may watch Keeping Up with the Kardashian marathons. Uh, and, and somebody who does this really successfully, or or at least appears successfully with it, is is Candy Crush. Um, and obviously, that's in the game in the games category, not in retail. But like they, they are purchasing ads specifically around their app. Uh, it's all focused on, on the app itself and, and how that's working. Uh, and it, like they're running them so frequently that I don't think that they're not making money. Right, yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I, I, think, I think TV and, and, and for off device in general is, is a really smart avenue to go. Yeah, I've definitely seen more and more traditional brands talking about their app and some of their commercials. Maybe not everything, but a few of them seem to have campaigns around this, right? Like um, retail banking, so Bank of America, Wells Fargo, these folks. I've seen Chase, Chase's blast in the airwaves recently talking about their app and their ability to take pictures of receipts and stuff like that. So I think these guys are, are um, realizing that their existing spend can actually be utilized to broaden their depth of communication and connection to their customers by getting them in their, their mobile app. Um, let's talk a little bit about web to app. Right. So this is something that you see a good bit, or right? you talk about with people. I know that you've been a proponent. If you have a website, people are coming to it and they're on their mobile device, telling them, "Hey, we have an app." Right. And, and, and communicating that there's another way for them to interact with you. So talk a little bit about the dynamics there. What do you what do you think is a good best practice, and what what are the downsides? Yeah. Well, so uh, the the biggest downside is if you do it in a spammy way, right? Yeah. So if if you do it in a spammy way, people are are just going to hate it. They're gonna, they're gonna not install your app, and they're probably not gonna come back to your site either, right? Yeah. Um, in fact, there's a whole, there's a whole Tumblr on, on sites that do this. Oh, really? I think it's like, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's no, I don't, no, I don't fucking want your app. Tumblr. Com or something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, and all it is is screenshots of, of people who are doing like interstitials, but interstitials in a bad way. Right, which is you go to somebody's website, you see an interstitial to install the app because you're on a device, um, and literally you can't see any of the content mm -hmm. on the page. So I, I think there's there's a couple things that make it better. One is if you're gonna do an interstitial, which I actually I personally don't mind, as long as it's really simple for me to get to the content that I want when I want it. Right. So I want that content right now. I came in through search. I came in through social. Whatever it is. Um, like, tell me you have an app, give me that interstitial. If, like, there's a good chance I'll install it, but it, like, if you're gonna do that, at least let me also see the content that I wanna see. Mm -hmm. um, smart banners from Apple are really interesting. Yeah. Um, that's a non-intrusive way of doing it. Yeah. So like, be, don't be spammy, do it in a way that, that still enhances the customer experience. Yeah. And what would your, be, your recommendations around this be? Like, uh, in terms of thinking about putting it on different sites, how do you 
how do you hit a point where you're like, okay, we have enough mobile traffic, we should start thinking about this? Uh, if you have a site and have any traffic, you should be thinking about it. Okay. Because uh, we consistently see, and I've yet to see a business that doesn't have an increasing share of the traffic coming from mobile devices. Mm -hmm. Whether they have 100 visits a day or 10,000, the mobile number is going like that. Yep. Right? So you got to be thinking about it. And um, I, I would look at it uh, as a funnel, like all things, right? So if you have a first time visitor, because I have the same thing happen where I'm just like, you get to some art, random article and it's like, it's all my app. And I've never even been to your website before. Mm -hmm. like, what makes you think I want that? Um, and you can be intelligent about, hey, this is a first time visitor, let's let them read the content. At the end, we might say, bookmark us, right? Then they come back again, they read some more content, then you might show an interstitial, hey, did you know in the app you get this additional content? Okay. Um, I mean, consumers are really smart these days. This isn't 1998 where people just add whatever, and cookies fly in, and right? people get it. Um, you need to be respectful of their time and their attention. Yeah. Uh, oh, that being said, don't be spammy. Yeah. I think um, one of the things that, in particular, retail sites, I, I, I think is a real problem and that people need to probably evaluate more deeply is if somebody comes to your retail site on their mobile device and you've got a mobile optimized site, they're coming there, generally speaking, with a task in mind, right? And if you, the first thing you do is say, hey, switch your task from doing what you came here to do to downloading the app, installing it, then having to log in or something, right? you've probably created much more friction for that consumer to complete their task, and that is probably a big um, you know, cost loss for you, yeah. or, or, or revenue loss, actually. So, so, because that person doesn't necessarily complete the task that they came there for, they get frustrated. And so you want to think about if um, people are coming in your site, where it might be appropriate, or if you, if you think about the second or third time that they come back, that's when you try to Talk about what the benefits are and why that would actually save them a bunch of time. You might have gotten to a point where you've earned that. And, and I think that you can, on top of that, like you can, you can provide innovative features on the mobile device that is hard to provide on the mobile yeah. web, and that you can use to entice users. Being, you know, saying like, "Hey, do you want to have a, a 360 degree view of this product? Like, it's hard for us to do this in in the mobile web, but if you install our app." Start yeah. to play with the product in a new way, whatever it is. Yeah, I, I, and I think to your point, really this is about separating. This and there's two different sides. There's a transactional relationship and there's a relationship relationship. Yeah, right. And people who download apps want to have a relationship relationship. Yeah, you can go to a mobile website to buy something. They want a, they want a transaction. Let them do, let them do the transaction and then do what you just said. Yeah. Hey, did you know if you go do this, you could do X, Y, and Z? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, I think that we've covered the fact that there are other ways that you can market your app. You might have existing channels, TV, if you're, if you're spending on TV, if you're spending on print, if you're spending on radio, those are places to start telling people, generating awareness around your apps. You should certainly be investing in that, but if you have a website that has meaningful traffic, thinking about non-spammy ways to direct that traffic to your app and tell them about the benefits is really pretty valuable. So uh, make sure to like this uh, on YouTube, share it, Check out the other videos that we will be shooting today about marketing. Thanks.